Welcome to Annie Jennings Publicity Success Series, where we showcase client success and leveraging Annie's media bookings as door openers to huge opportunities with mega money-making potential. My name is Stacey Amaral Kaufman. I'm radio director of Annie Jennings PR, and I'm joined by the one and the only Annie Jennings herself, CEO of the national PR firm, Annie Jennings PR. And today, we are having a very special guest, one of our favorites, J.P. Hansen. He's an international award-winning and best-selling author of three books, The Professional Speaker, Life Coach, CEO of an executive search company, and his book, The Bliss List, has won four awards and was just featured in Reader's Digest magazine last June. J.P. has appeared as a career expert, reaching over 50 million people on Fox News, CBS, ABC, NBC TV, radio shows across the country, and the L.A. Times, Fortune, AOL, Career Builder, CNN.com, as well as FoxBusiness.com. So, JP, you've been pretty busy with all of this media. Yes, I have. You've you've kept me busy, and I'm um, I loved every moment of it. Great. Now, let's ask you this question. We know this is your favorite. How are you doing today? I'm living the dream. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Living the dream. And so how did you get to the dream? I, I guess that's the question. How did how did Annie Jennings Publicity help you get you to where you are? Well, my dream might be different than others. I can wake up at three in the morning and write a chapter in a book. Most people rather stick pins and needles in their eyes. So uh, <laughs> the first part of finding your dream is, is uh, I heard a quote at a, uh, a seminar I, I did not too long ago that it takes 10 years to become an overnight sensation. And I believe I took at least that long before I had the the gumption to finally finish that book. And uh, it's been a fun journey ever since. But the, uh, you know, my dream was to always to write a book. And when that was realized, then that's when life got really interesting. You know, I also have a quote. It's one of my favorite that we talk with uh, or I tell our clients all the time. You may have even heard me say this to you at some point, that the person that wakes up and finds himself in overnight success was never asleep, right? It's kind of the <laughs> That's same thing. That's a good thing. one. <laughs> That's a great yeah. quote, yeah. This is Annie speaking, and Stacy absolutely loves that quote because we use it a lot. It really takes a lot of dedication and drive and, and focus and discipline to reach your goals. And I know that, uh, JP, when you came to us, you were, you were immediately, you know, we fell in love with you and your topic and saw tremendous potential in terms of media placements for you. So you engaged our ladder strategy, which is where we build you up over time. But you happen to go very quickly, actually, because, uh, you were, you were really invested, I feel, in your own success. You were, you told me, mentioned, you mentioned recently, that you were willing to roll the dice. It was your time, and you were ready to go. You were ready to invest in yourself. So can you tell us a little bit about how you came to that decision to invest in yourself, how you invested in yourself, and how you leveraged the opportunities that came your way you know, from that investment? Well, there's three, there's three things that I can answer that with and then expound a little bit. First thing you need to do is get a good dermatologist. You have to have thick skin. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> and uh, Second thing is, is I always saw myself as a marketer and not an author, so I never looked at at writing as a significant source of income. That doesn't mean that I wouldn't accept it, but I, that means that I was realistic in knowing the numbers are against you. You have a better chance of winning the lottery than getting a a, a big book deal. And the third is just what you said: invest in myself. And um, I had 308 turndowns with literary agents when I first had written the original manuscript for the Bliss List, and it had a different title, which was, in hindsight, not a not a great title, and I didn't have that platform. So rather than fold up my tent and just and pout and cry, I um, ended up doing just that. I, I, it's like going to the casino and, and doubling down on yourself. I um, invested in a company that. Um, was able to micro publish the book similar to what Jack Canfield and, and um, Hanson did with the uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul series. And after that, um, I had a really high quality book that was done professionally with a professional cover and, and editing. And um, then you're on Amazon, and now what do I do? And that's where it became real interesting when I started really um, investing in myself with hiring Andy Jennings. And you guys got me started, I, I think, the first day. I mean, I, I, I um, had a great conversation with you, and then we uh, 
we knew we were a match for each other, but you probably didn't know if I could even speak on the radio station or TV or in interviews. And um, got me started, threw me into the into the mix, and it it's been fun ever since. So the uh, the 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 interesting learning I've had is what what doors have opened because of the the ability to to look at myself as a marketer and invest some some um, pretty sizable amounts of money early on. And that's opened up new areas. I mean, now I'm a professional life coach. I'm doing professional speaking gigs. I'm, uh, I've got a whole bunch of new business as a result of the platform that you and um, your your company helped me build. You know, that's a very interesting point, and that's and that's an important uh, consideration. Is that it's really not about book sales. I often say that it's really not the that it's not the book sales that are really going to increase the value of your contribution to society, although the messaging is very important. It's also the way publicity and appearing on TV and radio and sharing your message, the way that that can build up your national expert status and put you in a whole different conversation, a whole new league of authors and experts, one that's in demand. People are coming to you, offering you opportunities. It's awfully nice to have people come to you and say, hey, how'd you like to keynote for 30000 And you get to say, sure, yeah. I'll be there. But they wouldn't do that unless you had that experience behind you that's demonstrated by all these media opportunities. Yeah, people think I wrote I wrote a book. Now I'm automatically going to be an expert in my given field, and that's a huge step in finishing a book. But the tougher part is actually being open to what am I going to do now? I mean, there's millions and millions of titles out there on Amazon. So how do you position yourself at the top of the heap in the given area you're in? And that, that's where... Mm-hmm. That's where your company really helped me out a ton because here I am a self-published author appearing on Fox News and getting in the LA Times and getting in Fortune and CNN and, and on down the line. It's dizzying almost <laughs> to pinch yourself. But I, I, I spent 20 years in this business, so I knew I had the gumption to do this, and I knew I had a story to tell, and I knew my foundation of the business is really to help people find their dream jobs. I noticed you were never afraid to invest in yourself. You're always willing to go for it. It's like, yes, this is my time. I'm doing it. I want this major media. I want to be a big player. I want to stand well beyond the rest in my a particular area of expertise. I want to be the one that gets chosen for all these big deals. And you were. It turns out, you, you mentioned recently that you, you, from what you've invested, you have earned, it's led to hundreds of thousands of dollars in new business. Yeah, the return on investment would put me on a, in a Wall Street investment firm. <laughs> and it, um and it, there was there was a small risk associated obviously but you know if you have if you have something to say and you've got a compelling story and you can write it down in a book um or whatever avenue you're going to use there's no doubt that getting on those types of of media ch- outlets and channels reaches so many people and I I've, I've reached so many people in in just one interview or one article or or what have you in um in terms of something I couldn't have done on my own so it was a great partnership on both sides. You kept you definitely kept me busy. And what's interesting is this. I, I I should learn by now never to ask a question I don't know the answer to, but I'm curious about something. Did you interview with other PR firms, and why did you choose our company? Yeah, I th- I believe I interviewed five or six. If I look back at my notes, probably five or six firms. And um, I obviously Annie's energy was um, – was perfect and you were real excited about my book and, and genuinely excited and you had taken the time to look up information on me many of the firms i talked to didn't give me really the time of day <clears throat> and i got some junior i'd say junior people in the firm um and then i mean bottom line i'm willing to invest some money on myself and throw the um, throw the chips on the table but you were also willing to say we can get you placement and we're willing to do that do that only if uh, if we do that, then then we will be paid. So that was really appealing to me. And you came highly recommended from another fellow author that had used you guys in the past, um, and of the marketing firm that I had used to do the bulk of my uh, creative work to get the book started. So you right. it was uh, it was a, it was a no brainer once we finally talked. Uh-huh. Well, thank you. I think people do appreciate, and I know we have our radio director on the line, Stacy, who is uh, the powerful instrument behind building this number one radio campaign that we offer that really gets you out to the major media very quickly, builds up your media bio quickly in order for us to leverage it for bigger and better opportunities as well. So we engage in our ladder strategy, 
I just named it that for the visual that you you come in at any stage. All right, so JP came in having huge potential, but had but was yet unrecognized or untapped at that point. So he comes in at a, at one of the lower rungs, but very quickly he built himself up to the highest rung. I mean, he made it to a ten with all of his accomplishments. The thing is, is walking in and going to attend the next day is not responsible. Everybody would get fired, believe me. You can't go up that fast because you don't have, right, the bio, the depth of your media bio for the media to have confidence in you at that point yet. So you can't walk in and get CNN, Fox News, NBC very first day. You can start media placements very first day, but we quickly move up that ladder. And the idea is to keep going up, never going back. Just keep going higher and higher and higher and using your media placements to leverage into bigger and better. And for those that are nervous about, about I think everybody has a bit of a phobia of getting in front of people. The, your, stra- your ladder strategy worked, and it made sense for me. And it's easy to get up and do an interview in a market that's, um, you know, not a major market. I think my first interview was in Cincinnati, which is a nice city. And um, good fit for me. I'm Midwestern, and I've, I actually spent a lot of time in that town. But you're doing a five- or six-minute interview, and it builds your confidence when you get off the interview and you say, well, I, I think I sounded okay. You graded me a 10. I wouldn't give myself a 10 on that first one. But that same station had me back on. And Stacy right. did a good job, of, and your, your firm did a good job of, of prepping me on, on uh, some media hints and how to, um, how to be a good, strong interview on those outlets. And um, the training paid big dividends for me because I started gaining some confidence. But I, I believe, uh, I mean, there was a time when you guys had me doing three. I kept saying, throw it at me. I could do more. I could do more. You had me doing, I think, three radio interviews in one day, one time. <laughs> and the big ones, too. I mean, that's what we're famous for, the number one radio campaign in the industry, the big shows and the big markets. What I noticed is when I was doing these interviews, it made me sharper. It's, you have to get up at sometimes 4.30 in the morning and do an East Coast interview. Mm-hmm. And um, it gets you out of bed, and then you then you start your day earlier, and you're Boy, it's an invigorating way to start a day is to go live on an interview. And, um, you know, radio made a lot of sense because you can do it in the comfort of your own home and you don't have to worry about, about you know, what's my appearance look like? Am I going to fall off this chair? Is it, am I, you know, sweating profusely? And I could pretty much sit in my swimming suit and Jimmy Buffett shirt and you'd never know. But I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that probably would be the case. And you know what the nice thing about it is, is that you have all these media assets now that are forever on your bio. You know, you invested once, you got the media asset, and you get to leverage that over and over again. And it'll continually pay you back because you'll continually outperform and outcompete anyone else coming up against you for certain gigs or opportunities. I look at the media that you guys had um, had me do, and in, in I couldn't even listen on one page. And it's dizzying. <laughs> the reach, and it's it's amazing how it just kept building and building and building. And you can do all three at once. It was pretty fun doing some print interviews that you could take with you on the road and then do some live in-studio interviews on television and then um, pop a few radio appearances. And it um, it all worked like a symphony for me. And I, I look back on it, and um, it definitely was was an exciting time when we were doing the, the bulk of it. And I definitely have... have uh, have continued to do some interviews, but it's it's mm-hmm. it's probably been the bigger ones that I've focused on and a little bit a little away right. from the smaller ones. But so now I'm going to ask the question that's on, that everybody who's listening is saying, please ask this question. Please ask him how how did you leverage all this raw opportunity? Now you're sitting there with Mega Media. You're sitting there with a great topic, you know, career enhancement, the Bliss List, fabulous topic like built in. It's a good good one. How did you take all those assets, that raw material of talent and potential, and shape it into the life you have now? You told me your your dream, you're living the dream for dream jobs. You're making a ton of money. I mean, everyone wants to know they want that. They want what you have right now. And knowing that you started where they are right now, this is what they want to know: is how. First is don't quit your day job, <laughs> and and prepare yourself for the worst, but hope for the best. Um, I will say that having 308 turn down letters, I've got a funny story. The, one of the early ones was a literary agent in New York, very well known, and, and certainly has made a lot of placements. She actually took the time to call me and pretty much read me the riot act about how dare you do a book like this titled The Bliss List at a time when so many people are suffering. And I, I took a big gulp and I said, well, I appreciate you're taking the time to call, but how dare you 
call and tell me that when the very people you're talking about are <laughs> who I'm going to help. And um, I just said, well, I don't think we're going to be a good fit, but, you know, I, I respect your opinion and, and blah, blah, blah. A lot of people would have probably started crying, but I just <laughs> I thought that was funny. Fast forward it after I financed the book and then started with your firm right around the same time, I had been nominated for an international uh, book award. And um, lo and behold, I won it. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa, well, this is okay. Now I can say award winning. And uh, from there, the uh, one of the it was a, an amount of cash, and I forget what it was. It wasn't a huge amount, but it was it was amount of cash, a, a nice plaque, and then the right to be represented by a famous New York agency. And guess who it was? It was the very one that called and read me the riot act. <laughs> that oh, was wow! I, I I thought that was serendipity at its finest. But totally. the um, no, I I think you have to be prepared to not all of a sudden publish your book and notice that the numbers are putting you at the top of the charts. And you have to really look at yourself as a marketer and have a lot of patience. Patience and persistence are really the difference. And, um, and I, can I, I add one more thing? Just now? Yeah, go for it. And yeah. Maybe you can go, maybe you can just weigh in on this. The difference, and this is so important in, in, in creating the kind of life that you want, you know, JP Hansen style, is r- real PR versus fake PR. Now, fake PR is when you're all dressed up with no place to go. All right. It's like not really getting out there in the world. JP appeared on the shows. His quotes appeared in the in the major media. He went to the studio and was on TV on national TV. That's called active PR versus passive. That's called real PR, and I'll call it fake PR. Fake PR is when you think you're doing something, but nothing happens. How dangerous is that, JP? Well, I'm a big fan of, of a mystical part of the book came out, and that's in meditation. And I know uh, that would have gotten me burned at the stake a couple hundred years ago, but today it's there's scientists that are beating, even beating the drum of the benefits. But if you sit around and meditate all day long and you don't take action, <laughs> you're going to be doing fake PR. So every time I was, I would practice uh, very active meditations with, with visualization. And I always would visualize myself on those shows. And lo and behold, there you go. And they, you know, you get there and it seems like it's automatic. And um, I think it's getting past that, the F, the F word. I'm going to use a four-letter word here, fear. And everybody okay. has a fear. Yeah. I think most people have a fear of succeeding. And it's, if I would have had that, if I would have allowed fear, and in the, in the mm-hmm. bliss list I call it the four-letter words of can't, don't, won't, and fear, uh, I could tell you no monuments were ever built with fear, can't, don't, or won't. And well, I had to overcome that in my own way with plunking down some cash, investing in myself, and then saying, I can do this. And I'm not going to do poorly in an interview, and I'm, I might, you know, I might stumble a little bit. I think I almost fell off a chair one time in a Fox studio, but, <laughs> but I, you know what? I learned. If you had fear of, if you had fear of success, you wouldn't have hired our firm. And that, and he brought up an important point because I've noticed this: the passive fake PR. And you, listen, it allows you to say, it allows you to blame someone else and say, oh, I put down all this money and. They got me nothing. It's their fault I was not successful. Do you see how the blame is being transferred to another person who just entered your life a couple months ago? Please. But real PR allows you to take responsibility for your own success. So if JP had fear of success or had it worked through any issues with fear, he never would have hired our company. Because the thing is, with us, you're successful. That's the point. We know what we're doing. We're a guaranteed deliverable PR firm, meaning you come in, you get what you sign up for. And that's the difference. So if you have fear of success, it's not good to work with our company because we're going to really press. We're going to challenge you to challenge and what yourself. And was nice, what was nice is I signed up with you guys, and I, I believe the next day I was doing an interview. So there was no, there was no, you know, it's the best thing if you if you've got a fear of needles, go in the doctor's office, have them take you and give you the shot real fast before you can think. You guys didn't let me start internalizing it and start thinking, oh no, what am I going to do on a yeah. live on a radio station? I don't know what to say. But um, it all came, it comes to you and. And fear is funny. Fear is really false evidence appearing real. And if you can take that out of the equation and just focus on the positives of, of where you're going to go with a media campaign, I, you know, a lot of people get lazy and think because I have a Facebook page and a Twitter account and I use Instagram or what have you, that that's all I need to do and that's going to be enough to build a platform. Well, that's wrong. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not knocking any of those. I have three Facebook pages and a Twitter account and all those things also. But it wasn't until I started doing the real, active, meaningful media with Annie Jennings PR that that my um, 
my platform really started to, to grow. And then lo and behold, fast forward it, short period later, I, I thought, okay, now I've got this platform, and I was dizzying looking at it, and I wanted to revisit a couple of the agents because I did want to attract a big uh, publisher. And I sent out three query letters. Now, remember, I told you 308 turndowns. And three of the query letters were to agents that I had targeted that had turned me down with a quick email. And um, one of them was my top targets in the career category. And uh, she not only accepted, she accepted with enthusiasm and did a really good job in selling it into Reader's Digest, which is also using Penguin um, to uh, at the retail level. So they did what I couldn't do, and they helped move that platform even further. But I couldn't have done it without what you guys had built in media, um, in all the media you had me uh, work on for, for a better period of a year. Well, thank you. JPS, wonderful. You mentioned earlier that you're a coach. So if we have listeners now that really want what you have, but somehow can't get past the fear of success, that is the self-sabotaging that does take place, that's sometimes subliminal, out of their control, they really need help. Are you able to coach people? Oh, sure. I've, my coaching business has boomed ever since Reader's Digest did their 10-page article mm-hmm. in June. And they they had me trail four people that were that I didn't know who were all unemployed. And they gave me six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh wow! Hey, help help find their dream jobs. Oh, and it's it's holiday time, so good luck. But magically, right. it worked, and I I helped them overcome their own fears. And two of them had pretty sincere fear uh, fears of of falling. And um, and I I would say that everybody can benefit from from different pieces of information. I'm I happen to be very good at what I do with life coaching. And it may not be for everybody, but if you're open to it, if you're open, if you're a seeker who's open to things, and you can take take your fear out of the equation, I think everybody I've had as a life coach client has been with me for at least a year, and some for several years, mm-hmm. and they've all seen remarkable improvement as a result of some of the some of the advice. But it's it stems to just basically having confidence in yourself. Mm-hmm. And to to anybody who wants to write a book or who has written a book, just don't give up. If you had enough, if you spent the time to write the book. Um, don't give up because a couple of people say, no, it's not right, or, or how dare you, because <laughs> those people may come back and, and make you laugh when you when you are faced with the, with the funny um, story I had. Uh, but it is, it's a, it's a journey, and it's a, enjoy the ride, and also enjoy the people that may give you rejections, because there's a higher purpose to everything, and, and I, sometimes rejection is the best thing. Looking back on it now, I'm glad I didn't sign with those agents because I wasn't ready. And now now I knew when I was, and when I was, it was automatic, and it happened almost overnight. But it certainly wasn't overnight sensation. It was about a 10-year bill. Well, thank you, JP. Your story is great. It can provide hope for lots of other authors out there listening right now that they can get to where you are, to the 10, to the top of that ladder, and enjoy that same success. And everyone can uh, reach out if you'd like to learn more about JP Hansen and any of his books, The Bliss List, The Bliss List Journal, as well as Pink Slips and Glass Slippers. You can do so, uh, do so on his website at blisslist.com. That's B-L-I-S-S list. L-I-S-T dot com. To find out more about Annie Jennings' publicity and how you, too, can experience success in your life, just like JP did, you can visit our website at www.AnnieJenningsPR.com. That's AnnieJenningsPR.com. Till next time.